Hi guys! I just had to pop in real quick because I'm embarrassed by just first few minutes of this video and I just kind of wanted to clear the air. This first part is basically a few sentences about how I gained weight and I'm uncomfortable as fuck in this clip and uh, let me tell you, it's the second time I filmed this video because the first time was just one fuck up on the other and it just didn't make sense. So I filmed this for a second time when I'm talking about the subject that, you know, is relevant to my own life. So it's something I know about, it's something I think, like this, these are my genuine opinions and the things I did. And yet, I'm so freaking uncomfortable in those first few clips. It's obnoxious. Talking about body image is so freaking important. I thought I knew that and I thought I'm okay with how things are. And yet, the way I presented this topic in those first few minutes of this video is just freaking, first of all, annoying. Second of all, obnoxious, as I already said. And third of all, is this even how you count things i don't know it's also very much eye-opening for me personally because i had no idea this is how i look or this is how i present myself talking about my own body image also i'm freaking hangover so i just i i just don't want to talk anymore so okay hope you enjoyed this video and i love you and peace and around april this year i decided to get some help. I basically gained some weight that I didn't plan on gaining. That's how I met Monica, who is my dietitian. No, dietitian, dietitian. I hope I got that right. Anywho, she's creating balanced meals for me based on things that my body actually needs and then I can control what I put into my body. Um, yeah, I wasn't really sticking to it as much as I should have been doing it until last month. And there is a reason for that. I did something that I'm not necessarily proud of. I went on a binge. It wasn't until like the day after that that I like really understood what I have done to my body and I said no more to that shit. That's how I quit sugar like for real this time but this video isn't about that let's talk about how to get back on track after you went on the binge because it happens and i think it's kind of normal although i think it shouldn't be everyone i talk to about it they're like yeah me too i, I do the same thing it's almost weird because we present ourselves as this perfect people who you know like don't have problems to like strangers when in reality we are very similar and have go through similar problems so Talk to people around you, highly recommend it. Let's talk about life after binge, shall we? My first tip is to tell everyone. Tell your roommate, your mom, your boyfriend, your cat, tell everyone that you're dropping junk food for a while because you want to be a healthy bee and feel good about yourself and you want to make healthy decisions and build a healthy lifestyle. And you, you, no, you don't have to explain yourself. My experience is that people are very supportive of it. Very often they will like try to do that challenge with you, like 30 days without eating processed sugars or something. Uh, people will be down for it. Very often just to prove themselves or like to prove a point that I can do that. We as people usually like challenges, so it's a very good moment to use that. And if those people are not necessarily down for a challenge like that, or like you can't really convince everyone around you, like it's not possible, you can tell those people to like not leave that kind of foods in plain sight for you to see and crave and want to eat. And it already will be very much helpful. Number two, use the right words. If someone offers you a piece of cake and you'll be like, oh, sorry, I can't eat that, they will try to convince you. They will be like, oh, you look so good. Oh, it's just a piece of cake. It's just one beer. It's just one drink. And you know what? They are right. Like, hell, it's probably true. One piece of cake, like, never killed anybody, right? What? What? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know about maybe Maybe it did. Okay. Um, it is true. It's just one piece of cake, but it's still doesn't support the lifestyle that you're trying to build. One wrong decision can completely destroy the foundation that you have been building for yourself around the habit. If you have been saying no for a while there, it's just not worth it. When you say, I can't eat that cake because I'm on a diet and I want to be skinnier or something, they will try to convince you. They will be telling you stuff like, you look awesome, you don't have to be on a diet, oh come on, just eat that cake. They will negotiate with you. 
whether or not you should eat that cake. If instead of telling them, I can't eat cake, you tell them, I don't want to, that switches the situation completely because there is no much room left for them to negotiate whether or not you want to eat that cake if you already told them you didn't. Yeah. At first, it won't be easy to say no to things, but I would say just fake it till you make it. To be honest, it's one thing that really helped me through this month that I have not been eating sugar because there have been people eating cakes and cookies and chocolate all around me and I just had to convince myself that I don't want to eat that because in reality, I don't. The fact that I crave those foods because I'm so used to them doesn't mean that I want to eat them. So keep that in mind and just say, I don't want to if you don't want to because you probably don't want to if you're watching this video. The third tip is to acknowledge the situations where you actually crave junk food. Now, <clears throat> for me it was usually when I was either alone watching Netflix, nobody around me to judge me basically, or with my best friends or with my boyfriends, like whatever. Basically the people I felt the most comfortable around. These are the situations where my most disgusting comfort zone self comes out of me. And I don't, I don't really like her to be honest. These are the situations where I, yeah, I really do crave junk food, mostly because there are other people eating it. And then when I'm around people that I don't know that well, it's way easier for me to like say, no, thanks, I don't eat that. Like I just want to be seen as this healthy, athletic girl that doesn't eat shitty food, okay? And that sounds very bad, I'm, I know, but it's tied to my identity, the person I want to be seen as. Whereas when I'm around people that I'm really comfortable around, it's just not that easy to say no. Try to avoid those situations. If you can plan to cook something healthy together and make like a thing out of it, it's great. But if you can't, try to plan some activities that don't really involve food. There are many things we can do, you know, like go outside, like there are many things really. Um, yeah. So there's that. And always remember that these cravings are not who you are, as cheesy as it sounds. It's just what your body is used to doing. And if you want something else, you don't have to be a slave to your body and its preferences at the time. You're like almost addicted to some things and it's it's not healthy at all. So it's good to drop that habit, you know, of, of eating. Yeah. That's what this video is all about. Why am I like explaining this right now? I don't know. Step number four is something I already like kind of talked about in the previous step, and that is your identity. I like literally just said that I want to be seen as this healthy athletic girl, Ugh, right? It's it's cringy, it's creepy. I, I shouldn't say that out loud because there are my friends watching it. So <laughs> if you have a similar mindset to like what I just have mentioned, then use that to your advantage. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. If you can turn around that identity thing and you know, like try to be the way you want to be seen as is the first step to actually being that person, especially for like rebels from the four tendencies if your tendency is a rebel then this works like a charm and i'm a rebel myself so i should know and i do i just said that number five is to get strict for a while because you have to fake it till you make it and even though you want to scream yes at i don't know french fries and chocolate and everything like oreos i don't know what you're craving right now <laughs> maybe let's just not talk about food um learn to say no when you want to say yes and i'm not even kidding do it out loud i was like walking down the aisle with my mom i was like walking down the wow no i was i'm not getting married guys i was like in a supermarket in a junk food section basically back then i was really craving chocolate and she was like you know picking it up for later and i was just like walking there with her screaming no like no no at everything i was seeing like everything i was craving i was just turning it into a no and that sounds so cheesy and so stupid but i was really doing that you can ask my mom okay and then also when i was like around friends or like my family and they were eating something i didn't want to eat although i was still craving it i was also like you know in a funny way it was like a joke i was just saying like no 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 uh-uh I, I hope i didn't look like that when i was doing it but <laughs> set those rules for yourself in a way that you know you will be actionable the goal isn't really to never have a taste of chocolate ever again if that's something you really like it's just learning how to set boundaries for yourself and building that self-control it's literally so hot in here that my camera keeps turning off because of the heat but fortunately we're like at the end so um where what i'm bad at this if you can go through a challenge, let's say 30 days of eating healthy and not eating junk food, chocolates, 
sugary foods like processed sugars or fast foods like any of that sort you won't eat it for 30 days after 30 days you can readjust and like tell yourself that you're allowed to eat something sweet or like something a little junky like you can eat forbidden foods once a week or once a two weeks whatever works for you really but getting strict first things first will build that self-control that later on will help you to like just eat one cookie instead of eating all of them you know i think that's a very important step here my camera keeps turning off and i'm freaking tired so let's just let's just wrap this up by saying that stop waiting for tomorrow monday new month and so on just make a healthy decision for yourself now because what you eat and what you put into your body what you eat it's such a big factor for how you feel and how you perform on a daily basis set your rules for yourself be smart about them make them actionable but make them good for yourself and that is all i have for you guys today so there you guys have it i hope you enjoyed it I hope I'm gonna finish my sentence without my camera turning off. I love you more than life coffee. Yeah, I'll completely forget about it again. I, I'm... It's getting boring, like every time I drink coffee with you, I completely forget about it, but it's, it's just how YouTubers do it. And I just call myself a YouTuber. Ooh. I love you more than I love coffee. And I see you in the next one. And life is a story. So make it a good one. <laughs>